Coming up tonight on 18 Eyewitness News. Clay Waller's attorneys begin the appeal process but run into difficulty. About 50 miles of roads in Iron, Madison, and Reynolds County are going to be improved. Plus, you have the opportunity to save three lives this Saturday. All of these stories and will the stormy conditions stay with us through the weekend. News, sports, weather. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us on 18 Eyewitness News. I'm Fred Dawkins. Here's some of the top stories we have for you. Clay Waller is starting the process of appealing the sentence on charges of transmitting a threat over the Internet. Now, a spokesperson for the 8th Court Circuit Court of Appeals in St. Louis says Waller's attorneys has submitted the appeal. However, the brief had defects and the attorney has been asked to resubmit it. According to the spokesperson, this is not an unusual situation. The attorneys have until the middle of next week to resubmit the appeal. Waller is appealing his five-year sentence for threatening his wife's sister on an Internet message board. Federal Judge Stephen Limbaugh offered and differed greatly from federal guidelines that suggested a 6- to 12-month sentence and gave Waller the maximum. Waller is now serving his time in a federal prison in Oakdale, Louisiana. Prosecutors also consider Waller a suspect in his wife Jackie's June 1, 2011 disappearance. Well, now Dustin Kopp is here in the Storm Tracker 18 Weather Center. We had a very busy day of storms and some real windy conditions. Dustin is here to take a look. This evening, temperatures are in the 40s after seeing severe weather move through southern Missouri. Things are starting to cool off. 46 right now in St. Louis, 51 right now in Ironton, 52 in Piedmont, and 55 in Poplar Bluff. Tonight, we'll see temperatures in the 40s, 44 by 7 p.m., clearing off to mostly clear sky. Clear skies by 9 with a 41-degree temperature and 36 by midnight under clear skies. What's in store for your weekend? I'll give you all those details coming up later in weather. Almost 50 miles of roads in Iron, Madison, and Reynolds County will be improved under a contract approved by the Missouri Highway and Transportation Commission Thursday. Missouri Department of Transportation Project Manager Pete Berry says the roads to be improved include Routes 21 and N in Iron County, Route Z in Madison County, and Route 72 and MM in Reynolds County. It'll be about a one-inch asphalt overlay on all these routes. Uh, the only exception to that is is one of the routes uh, it'd be Iron Reynolds Route in. It will receive the overlay, but it will also get two-foot wide asphalt shoulders added to that route from Route MM intersection north to Route 21. The $4.6 million contract was awarded to McGruder Paving of Troy, Missouri. Barry now says the overlay will extend the life of that roadway. Typically, with a one-inch overlay, we're looking at about seven to ten years of use out of that roadway before we have to do something else to it. Barry says to get the best price on a bid, MoDOT allows a window for when the work must be done. He says the contractor for this project can start as early as April and the work must be completed by December 1st. Four city workers are no longer employed by the city of Perryville. City Administrator Brent Bewerk confirmed to 18 Eyewitness News that the four had been released in the course of an investigation into allegations of theft of city property. Due to personal issues or personnel issues, the names of the workers are not being released by the city of Perryville. The investigation is ongoing at this time. When we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, you can save three lives with a small donation Saturday. That story is coming up only on 18 Eyewitness News. You have the opportunity to save three lives when you donate blood at the Froggy 96 Blood Drive this Saturday. According to the American Red Cross, one pint of blood can save up to three lives. Peggy Lake of the Red Cross says our unusual winner has depleted the number of potential donors. A lot of people are not able to donate or they're taking antibiotics because they've been sick with the flu. And uh, so actually there's not a shortage 
of blood, but we are having a shortage of donors right now. You know, people make appointments, and then they're not able to show up for their appointments because they've caught something. So right now is a tough time. Every two seconds, someone in the U.S. needs blood, and more than 38,000 donations are needed every day. Now, you can help out by donating at the Froggy 96 Radio Blood Drive Saturday from 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon at the Farmington Fire Department's training room at 222 East Columbia in Farmington. The deadline for corporate sponsors for the Madison Iron County Relay for Life is coming up this Monday. Relay for Life co-chairman Penny Gifford says sponsorships start at $250 and go up from there. Relay for Life teams are also doing fundraising events such as bake sales and trivia nights. Also, the St. Louis Cardinals are partnering this year with the American Cancer Society to strike out cancer on August the 19th. Folks can buy a $20 ticket to that game from a Relay for Life team member, and the Relay team receives $8. The pre-order deadline for the Cardinal tickets is March the 9th. Now, Penny notes that this year's Relay will be held in a new location. Our relay this year is June the 8th and 9th, and we have a new place that we're going to have it. We're going to have it at the Azalea Park, and that's the area where the Azalea Festival is held every year here in Fredericktown. We usually do it at the the high school track, but with all the construction going on with the new middle school out there, we're going to try a new venue this year and move it to the uh, Azalea Park. More information on all these events can be found at Madison and Iron County Relay for Life Facebook page. When we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, the cold and flu season is no fun for anyone, but for kids with asthma, it can be dangerous. Don Arnold tells us about the risks they run and how parents can protect them next in today's Your Health segment. The Dustin Cop right now is making a last-minute check of our 18 Storm Tracker forecast, which is coming up next. And welcome back after seeing a very stormy Friday morning and early afternoon. Things are going to start quieting for the weekend. We're going to see plenty of sunshine and temperatures are not going to be as warm as they were, but they'll still be around the average temperature for the next few days. Here in southeast Missouri, temperatures are in the 40s and 50s, 46 in St. Louis, 55 in Marble Hill, 54 right now in Cape Girardeau, and 51 right now in Ironton. Factor in the wind, there's a, some Places are seeing some wind chills out there. 38 up in St. Louis, over in Rolla, 36, 45 right now in Ironton, 47 in Piedmont, and 50 right now in Poplar Bluff. Here at the station, we're under a mostly clear sky with a temperature of 46 degrees. It feels like 38 because of that northwest wind at about 16 miles per hour. Current humidity right now at 51%. Uh, tomorrow we'll start seeing the sunshine come through. It's going to be a nice day. Temperatures are going to be average, though. Not as warm as they have been. We're going to just continue to see that nice sunshine for the weekend. So tonight we'll see lows in the 30s. 33 up in St. Louis, 32 in Ironton, as well as in Ellington. Van Buren, a low of 30. Poplar Bluff, 33. And 32 in Cape Girardeau. So tonight we'll see a low around 31 here at this station with a partly cloudy sky. It's going to be windy and it's going to be chilly. Northwest wind 10 to 15 miles per hour gusting at 30 at times. Tomorrow we'll see a high of 49 degrees, mostly sunny. It's going to be much cooler than it was today. West wind 10 to 20. As we look at the next several days, on Sunday, high of 51, partly sunny sky. Mostly sunny on Monday, 51 for your high. 64, mostly sunny on Tuesday, partly sunny and 61 on Wednesday. Thunderstorms move back in the forecast by Thursday, and rain is also in the forecast for your Friday. Another look at our weekend forecast as we head into the weekend. 49 for your high tomorrow with a mostly sunny sky, partly sunny and 51 for Sunday. Fred, back to you. This is 18 Eyewitness News Sports. In district tournament play from last night in boys action in Class 1, District Number 3, Eminence claims the district championship, defeating South Iron 41-33. And in the Class 2, District 2 championship, Winona fell to Thayer 45-41. In girls action last night, Eminence won the district title in Class 1, District 3, downing Bunker 52-22. In Class 2, District Number 2, Neelyville is district champions as they beat Couch 51-43. 
From the Class 2 District 3 Championship, Meadow Heights won big over Lesterville, 73-50. In Class 2 District No. 4, the semifinals were played last night as New Haven won over Viburnum, 53-36, and Bismarck beat St. Vincent, 61-51. And in Class 3 District No. 3, the championship goes to West County as they handled Saxony Lutheran, 53-28. The Blues' road trip hit a pothole as their winning streak ended at four games last night. The Canucks took over the top spot of the NHL standings after a 2-0 victory over the Blues in Vancouver. After 40 scoreless minutes, Vancouver's Alex Burrows scored his 23rd goal of the season before Chris Higgins added an empty netter in the third period as the Canucks picked up their 90th point to take over the top of the standings. The Blues continue their West Coast swing tomorrow night when they take on the Sharks in San Jose. The drama continues between the Rams and the St. Louis Convention and Visitors Commission. The team now has a May 1st deadline to present its vision for the Edward Jones Dome after turning down a $124 million plan from the CBC. The commission, which manages the dome, has announced that the Rams have rejected the CBC plan to make the dome first tier in 15 categories detailed in the lease for the building. If the Rams and the CBC cannot strike a deal, the team could walk away from the lease and leave St. Louis as early as 2015. And senior Marcus Denman and sophomore Phil Pressey were named to the Naismith watch list announced by the Atlanta Tip-Off Club earlier this week. Mizzou joins Kentucky, North Carolina, and Syracuse as the only schools with two representatives on the list. Denman, who has also been named to the Oscar Robinson and Wooden Award midseason lists, leads the Tigers and ranks second in the Big 12 Conference in scoring at 18.2 points per game. Mizzou wraps up the regular season tomorrow afternoon against Texas Tech. And that's a look at sports. We'll be back with tonight's Your Life segment right after this on 18 Eyewitness News. It was certainly a busy, busy, and almost a scary morning around southeast right. Missouri with all of the uh, tornado watches we had. There was a sighting of a tornado just south of Greenville, touched down, then went back up into the air. But there for a couple of hours this morning, Dustin, it got real, real freaky. I know we were live on the air both here at 18 Eyewitness News and on Froggy 96 and other stations, and it, uh, it got uh, scary there for a little bit. Uh, Pretty much the southern portions of our viewing area is where the most uh, hit as far as in the severe weather. We were under a tornado watch for a while throughout the morning and early afternoon, and then it just started moving off to the east. Mm -hmm. So, And then uh, the temperature got into the 70s today. I know. And then it started cooling off. What's, uh, what's the weather look like for the weekend starting out the work week? Uh, the weekend's not looking too bad. We're going to see uh, temperatures in the low 50s. And then we're going to see plenty of sunshine, uh, about 51 for your high on Monday. All right, very good. Hopefully the weather will be better for us this weekend. That does it for our wrap-up of 18 Eyewitness News. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a blessed evening, and God bless. Have a good night, everybody.